this is our first panel of the day. We're at the State Street Street Jacob Kruger House. That's Jake. Jake, wave. Um, and this is a panel on social media and the importance of social media. I'm going to let the panelists introduce themselves. I'm going to make this very intimate, uh, so that's cool. Very cool. I'm Christina Campagnola. I'm an agent at the APA in our indie film group. So I package and sell independent films. I am Lee Stoby from Lee Stoby Entertainment. I'm a manager, represent writers and directors. Uh, that's it, right? <laughs> I'm Susan Diner. Uh oh. My social media Business. is showing them off. <laughs> I'm Susan Diner. I'm a director, producer, and writer. Um, well, my background is as a development executive for many years and um, started to get funded for the film called Brick that I was a producer on. And, Bunch of other movies we can get into later. Okay, know. cool. And I'm Rich Bottom, the founder and CEO of uh, Stage 32. I'm also a producer and a screenwriter. I started as an actor in New York. So I'm just like you know, scratching and clawing, trying to make it happen. So maybe we could talk a little bit about, actually, maybe so you, Lee, because I think that the importance of branding on mm -hmm. social media, I think that a lot of writers and a lot of filmmakers don't understand the idea of using social media, not only to make connections, of course, mm -hmm but to build a brand. So maybe you could speak to that a little bit, you know, with your clients. Well, I mean, I think I'm the kind of person where, you know, I have my own company, right? So, you know, I met with there's a few, there's a few management companies, but like, it's just me. So I really, I have to really put myself out there, right? Because I have to make sure that I'm not, I'm competing with real scene and like these people that have had years of, of branding and of, you know, established of all this kind of thing. So I have to kind of fight that much harder. So I'm on Twitter, I'm on Facebook, I'm on many of these panels like this. I'm constantly putting myself out there. But at the same time, I'm also very open to it, right? Mm -hmm. So we have to kind of be open to what people tweet at me and they ask me questions or they'll send me a direct message or I'll get a query letter. So it's all this kind of just being, using the technology that's out there with me to reach out to people. Like I'll, if I want to sign a writer or a director, I'll tweet at them sometimes. I'll, right. tweet, I'll follow them. Like I'm trying to get a hold of them or I'll, I'll look at their feed to see what, you know, if I'm intrigued by someone, I'll go onto their Twitter feed to kind of get a sense of them and like, okay, they retweeted this thing. Like, it's important to kind of make sure that you put yourself out there, not even just for your own product, but just the stuff that you like. Mm -hmm. So that people know, like if, you know, I have a pug dog, I have this, I live in this place. So the idea when you're trying, when you're interacting with me, we could, you know, we can have a more kind of emotional kind of connection because Hollywood is about talking to people and having, you know, having connecting with people. And I think that's something you hit upon something I think a lot of people don't get, and that is that idea that you're not just always looking at the talent, mm -hmm. you're looking at the person, yeah. and you're talk louder. Is that what I'm getting? Is that what this means? Yeah. Yeah. Produce <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if that was like the way you want me to do it. But I, you know, I think what's lost for a lot of people is that they don't realize, and we talk about this on stage 32 all the time, is that if you don't have like your bio completed and you don't have your, um, like, the, for example, writers' log lines or filmmakers, you know, clips and your reels or your actor and actor, your reels, you're really doing yourself a disservice because if somebody comes to look at you and, you know, it's kind of intrigued by some of the stuff you're putting out there and then there's nothing there for you to see, it's not like you're going to go hunting all over, you know, you're not going to start Googling this person. You're, not, you're, you're probably going to move on to the next person. Mm -hmm. Would you agree? Yeah, oh, definitely. I mean, I, I just, like, had a meeting the other day, you know, with a writer, and, like, you know, you get pitched up all the time, but she, like, really was a fascinating person, and, like, after the meeting, you know, she, just, like, her own personal story, and after the meeting, I, like, followed her Instagram, like, right away, you know, because I was more interested in her as a person, and, and I want to work for that person because, because they're so interesting, and, you know, not just because of the ideas. You have to have ideas, you know, to give us something to sell, but... You know, really, at the end of the day, like you said, it's yeah. all about relationships. Well, you know? and I feel like I represent, I don't represent scripts, I represent writers. I represent writers, so it's about people. Mm -hmm. It's about how I can interact with them. Like, I will, you know, I, well, I'll read a script and think it's a, you know, pretty, oh, this, this was really good, but then I'll meet the person, like, I don't think I can, even if they're talented, they're not for me, because I just know I'm not going to be able to jive with them, and I can see, and I can smell, I can look at the tea leaves being like, this is just going to fall apart. I can see this is just, we're, we're not going to be oil and water with each other. We're not, right. it's not going to be a long-term kind of thing. So it's like, go, go forth, find, mm -hmm. find your spirit animal, right? <laughs> so having really clear ideas of what you want, right, in your life is important. Right. right? So that's why social media is important because it helps kind of reflect that. At the same time, I also say, I'll look at them sometimes and it will be bad sometimes. You have to kind of be careful what you put them on there. Right. Because like, I'm looking for some kind of things. It's also a good way for me to filter out people. Okay, well, I'm not going to do it. I can't touch this because there's something about this person. Where they live or what they're interested in or, you know, like, ah, oh, I don't, that's not what I want to do. 
Right. So it'd be good to have, I guess. So it's a delicate balance between the professional and the brand you're trying to put out there and not, for lack of a better way of putting it, being an asshole. Like, yeah. you know, being aware of your presence on social media. Yeah. Well, yeah, for me, I mean, I realized, I think, really early on how important it was to engage your audience. So when I, I, I did a film, I did a documentary called Punk's Not Dead, and it came out from years ago now, almost, yeah, nine years ago. And even back then, we had all of the bands um, Louder, back, on their, back on their MySpace pages. <laughs> they all put our banner on their MySpace pages. We... Um, we engaged everybody by creating street teams, and we were really, um, the street teams, instead of doing uh, traditional advertising, we would have them go and put out um, postcards and flyers in vintage clothing stores, tattoo shops, record stores, anything that might make sense to that audience. And um, we actually, for that movie, had offers from three different studios. We turned them down because our consultant suggested that we might have to do better if we self-distributed. Way back then, it was scary. It's scary turning down studios and saying, no, we're going to do this ourselves. But because of our social media campaign and because we have such a huge following and such a presence, um, we made a lot of money on our theatricals because we retained 40 to 50 percent of our box office. So for us, and that was for me the very beginning of like what I think now is one of the most important things that filmmakers can do, um, which is reaching out, getting to know the people so that they feel like they have ownership in your project. Mm -hmm. And that they're a part of it and they're along for the journey. Mm -hmm. And that brings up the accessibility part of this, too. Yeah. Because now mm -hmm. people are more accessible to you than ever before. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So talk a little bit about the right approach, the wrong approach. You know, the fact that you can reach anybody at any time and it does make it, you know, it makes a huge difference because now you're anywhere in the world and you mm -hmm. can be, you know, find the glow of your computer screen at night, you know, and mm -hmm. reach anybody. <laughs> but obviously if you're if i'm a writer and i'm trying to reach you guys and there's a million other writers that see that you're out there as well so you're going to get bombarded all the time so talk a little bit about right and wrong approaches to coming towards you you know to, to initiating a conversation with you i mean mutual friends is a huge thing i i mean the reverse of your question before sundance i got on Facebook, if there was a filmmaker I wanted to meet and I saw I was here, you know, I got on Facebook and saw who we know, and that was kind of like the talking point, you know, mm -hmm. so that's definitely something that writers could do, you know, or if you're directors, you know, they could reach out and be like, oh, you know, Jessica, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, or I don't know, just, and find some commonality, like through my Instagram or Twitter, I mean, maybe it's kind of creepy, I don't, I don't know, <laughs> don't tell me you've read my feed, but, you know, <laughs> like, like, I think just finding that commonality or that mutual friend. Well, I mean, you know. I mean, like, as an example, like, I was, I saw a movie here, and then I wanted to meet with the director, but I'm like, I'm trying to get a hold of this quickly, so I sent them a Facebook message, actually, and they they didn't respond, and then we had a mutual friend, so then I called a friend, their mutual friend, and be like, yo, <laughs> do you have this person's email address or phone number, and tell them that I'm trying to get a hold of them, and then they sent them a message, and then they sent them a message, they're trying to get it going faster, right, right, right. so that's, like, I get to be kind of, oh, I think that's why I'm like, I'm very open. Like, I'm like, yeah, please, yeah. I'm trying to get hold of so I'm like, okay, what? Like, mm -hmm. being, you know, being kind of as open as I can, but at the same time, respectful. I mean, like, if someone, when you're, you're asking, like, what's the wrong way to go about it? Yeah. It's like, I think stuff like, I mean, at least for me, stuff like Facebook, stuff like Twitter, stuff like Instagram mm -hmm. is, you know, even email at a certain point, but, like, if you're calling me, like, just cold calling me, mm -hmm. and you're a writer, like, that's a little bit like, okay, well, mm -hmm. like I said, you were later, did you get it? Oh, I got it. Like, yeah. I got it. Yes. <laughs> My email didn't go down. I got your email. Well, what did you think? Did I respond to your email? Then I probably wasn't into it, right? Yeah. Like, it's kind of that's, you know, don't kind of, don't corner me, right? right? Yeah, like, so, but yeah, like, are you can send me, like, you can tweet at me once and I don't respond. You tweet at me seven more times. Like, well, I saw it. It's yeah. not like I didn't see it. That's, that's, that's it, the so. problem, too, that people don't realize. Like, there's, for me, there's one of me, you know? Yeah. I, I can only accept so much material. If you send me a query, I'm happy to read it, and if I'm excited about it, I'll respond. But if you don't hear back from me, I can't possibly write to everybody and say, "Sorry, not interested mm -hmm. in your project." Yeah, so, man. I feel like um, send it, send it, query letter with a little bit about who you are, what, and then a log line and a synopsis of your mm -hmm. project that you want me to look at. And if I'm interested, I'll get in touch. But if you're like, let's say, you know, you talk about common people and everything like that, like say you're a writer overseas somewhere, and you know that first point of contact, that first tweet, you know, to, to get to you, is it finding, a, like, sort of common ground within stuff that you've posted, maybe, like, you know, maybe content you shared, or maybe a film that you've been involved yeah, with? Yeah, I mean, especially, like, as opposed to read my script. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think, like, especially, like, on 
Twitter, like there's like film Twitter, which is like, you know, this kind of group of filmmaker people, you know, it's writers and directors and other managers and exec production executives, and they're kind of having this ongoing conversation on Twitter about everything that's kind of going on. Mm -hmm. They'll talk to each other, so it's like, you know, I'm, I'm in that a little bit. So it's like, if you can get into that group, well then just have a conversation with me too, right? right. It's like, I'd much rather like, you know, it's like Hollywood is a long game. Mm -hmm. It's a long game, mm -hmm. right? It's a long game, so it's like, get to know, you know, I mean, much, I'm gonna pay ten attention to something when you talk about like mutual friends. It's like, it's the same thing, it's like, don't send me a query letter, why don't you have your, like, oh, you know me? Right, and exactly. person, right. hey, why don't More you send natural. it to that person? Yeah. Like, using mm -hmm. the kind of, the, oh, I see that you were hanging out with this person, why don't I, because I know that person, why don't I reach out to them directly, because I know them too, and have them call. Right. Or me, or send them an email, or, hey, did, I think that this person sent you, like, I'll have, I'll appreciate it sometimes, like, oh, Lee, I heard you ran into this writer at a party, they're awesome, like an executive friend. Like, oh, yeah, great, that perfect. Approval. Now I'll yeah. actually pay attention to that and I'll read it versus, mm -hmm. yeah. but yeah, like, and then you, that can be helpful, like the social media can kind of help. Although, see. although, I mean, I met somebody at a party, and that was the last movie that I produced, starring Anna Paquin called Free Ride. Mm -hmm. I met Sean Assassin, Sean Betts now, at a party, and um, she's like, hey, will you read my scripts? I'm like, okay, because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> cool. And I ended up loving it. Yeah. So you never. And another another project that I optioned, I met him from doing a panel like this. So you yeah. just never know. Which... And it, it's you said Hollywood's a long game, but to me, social media is a long game. Oh yeah, yeah. it's yeah. it's yeah. about building those relationships and cultivating yeah. those relationships. We were having this conversation last night that everything good that's happened to me over the last four years of my, you know, personal career, not the stage thirty two running that business, came from stage thirty two. Yeah. You know, I had the film that came up here at Sundance in 2011. That was through a producer friend that I met through somebody else who recommended right. me to the project. Mm -hmm. My manager came from a producer, a uh, director who read the script and said you need to read this script, and that was through Stage 32. Just signed a deal for a screenplay that came through another person through the site that read it and said you should read this. Now, mm -hmm. Every, but it's a long game. That's mm -hmm. all over the course of four years. Yeah. You know. When I started Stage 32, I knew the exact same amount of people as everybody else, which was yeah. kind of not nobody. I mean, I knew some people in the business, but I didn't know anybody. You know, people started coming out to the site, I started cultivating those relationships and then doing some stuff on Twitter. And, you know, because I'm not, you're very open on social media. You really are. I'm super it, open. It takes a lot for me. <laughs> it, take, it, take, um, it doesn't feel natural for me in a lot of ways, like, you know, which is great for me running a social media site. But, um, <laughs> you know, but um, I, had, I had to learn to be able to let go a little bit of that. Not even so much to let people know a little bit of my personality, but if I'm trying to engage somebody else, they need to be able to kind of come see my feed and see right. what I'm about. And then I'm not just, you know, it's not just a me, me, me thing, which is, I guess, another good segue into this is what kind of, what are you posting all the time? Are you sharing? Are you, you know, for, again, as a, an approach to you guys, is it, I think a lot of people on social media forget that the, the key word is social. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? A lot of people are broadcasters. They're not mm -hmm. sharing information. They're not sharing content. They're not asking questions. Which for me, two big equalizers on social media. When people say like, well, how can I approach you guys when, you know, you guys are so entrenched and I'm a nobody. And I say, the two things you could do is ask questions and, and share content. Because mm -hmm. it shows what you're interested in, the sharing of the content. And if you ask questions, by nature, you're probably going to get a response. Yeah. If you're mm -hmm. really genuinely curious and you're showing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that again speaks to that whole idea about approach and not being a broadcaster. Mm -hmm. Right? Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, I have a specific example. I mean, I get query letters all the time and I sadly don't respond to very many of them. But the last, a couple weeks ago, actually, someone emailed me and said, I saw a documentary you made four years, you know, like when I was still in school, you know, and so, <coughs> like, you know, several years ago. And, you know, it was about a specific social thing, you know, and he was like, I, I'm really interested in idea, like in similar, you know, themes and concepts in my work. Like he found something that I did a long time ago and, and you know, <coughs> related it to what he was making. And so I responded and, you know, because I was like, that you did your research, you know, and that was really intriguing. Yeah. The problem was after I responded, he... He never, you know, got <laughs> <laughs> shame on, shame on that person. <laughs> you gotta follow. I don't know, stay, stay communicating. You know. But that's interesting. It's it's about doing the research, right? Yeah. I mean, like, how many times do you get query letters for things that you, you dear know, sirs, you, dear okay, sirs, no. right? sorry, right away. Yes. Yes. Yeah. What is it was like a four that? paragraph email. Like, I just like just write a little, Something, yeah. a little note, yeah. like. Yeah. But they should know who they're writing to, too, like yeah. what you guys have produced or who you've managed before, yeah. or what you've worked Absolutely. on. Because, you know, we get it with the happy writers all the time. Like, you get people who will go, we'll have somebody that comes in that's, you know, strictly like somebody from like Revolver, like, you know, it's, it's horror, or, you know. Mm -hmm. And 
they'll say, like, after we get done, they're getting pitched comedy. Or yeah. they're getting pitched, like, you know, so, and it's like, you gotta know your audience. Yeah. You know what I mean? What, yeah. what are you mm-hmm. showing? What are you putting out there? So the idea of being able to um, do the research and make it personal, I think, goes a really long way. And I kind of think it's an art form in a lot of ways. Like, mm-hmm. People are just so anxious to try to get a quick result. I mean, I'd say it's like I've signed, you know, I've signed a couple of people from Queer Lives actually last year, and I think, but what was interesting about both of them is that they were very, very targeted. They had actually done this, like, not even just like, not necessarily even on Twitter, but just my IV Pro page, and this, and my deadline articles, or whatever, like, looking through, okay, this is the kind of, looking at the stuff that I'm doing, I think that people will like this. And then they related their whole script and their whole being to Lee, I think that I, maybe we will work. And I'm like, okay, yes, I see what you're, I see how you're pitching this in a way, mm-hmm. and pitching it for me, right? You're making this specific to me and relating it to how I look at the world and what I want to be doing. Right, right. So that's really powerful, right? It is powerful. So personality, again, we talked a little bit earlier, but personality goes a long way yeah. as well. Like being yeah. able, mm-hmm. Because I think, especially with writers, I think that this yeah. gets lost, is that you they, you do need to be good in the room. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like oh, yeah. writers just think like, you know, mm-hmm. what, I, I, you know. <laughs> and what I even say, it's like, I represent writers, I can tell if you're a bad writer by your email. Exactly. My writers write good emails because mm-hmm. they're writers. Right. <laughs> like, that's just naturally. Yeah. Like, if I look at your email and like it's formatted bad, if you can't format an email, why am I going to think that your script is formatted well? Right. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> like why? Well, like of course I'm not going to think that. Like I, if it, it's all, it's going to trickle down through everything. If you can write a beautiful, concise, quirky, interesting email, mm-hmm. well, send me your script because you're obviously a writer. Mm-hmm. Right. If you're a writer, you have to be writing. Those are the kind of writers I want to represent. Right. Are actual writers, mm-hmm. and everything they do is writing, mm-hmm. right? Even a, even a little quick little blurb email or whatever. Right. It still has their personality in it, and it's so important because you, you do want to know yeah. that they can, you know, that you're going to put them in a spot. It's your reputation on the line, right? If you're going to put them in a spot. Well, and like if I'm representing a comedy writer, like if I look at their feed, their tweets should be funny, right? Like like again, like I have comedy writers who are on Twitter and they'll tweet jokes yeah. and I will laugh. Yeah. So I'm like, well, this person's funny. Their tweets are funny, and that's part of the brand. Yeah. It's that's like they, if, they, if you if you want to be a comedy writer and you don't know how to write a a funny tweet, that's a problem. Right. Like, that's, that's going to be a problem for you. It should be <coughs> very natural. You should yeah. be like, oh, this will be fun. And you should just be doing that, like, all day long. Right, right. right. Not, yeah. But how much is too much? Like, in other words, like, you want it, you know, so we hear this all the time on stage stage, it's like, I don't have the time to network. And my argument is, if you're a creative on any level, that yeah. your job is networking. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Your job is networking. Absolutely. Yeah. So if you're going to take dedicate an hour to, to your craft, or you yeah. a half hour should be to the craft, and a half hour should be to networking. Well, it's so important. I mean, it's networking is... I mean, it's a huge, huge part of what you do because nobody can market you better than you. Right. I mean, even today, or this this week at Sundance, um, I've met so many of my Facebook friends that I had never met in real life mm-hmm. before. Right? Yeah. And it was fun. <laughs> People come up to me, they're like, hey, we're Facebook friends. Mm-hmm. There was a big actress here who I went over to, to say hi and introduce myself, and she said, I know Susan, we're Facebook friends. <laughs> like, uh, it's really important because, you know, you have to stay engaging and you have to, networking is everything. Mm-hmm. I mean, it really is. I mean, I know managers, couple of managers that literally make their, if it's part of the requirement for their clients, they say you have to oh, be yeah. out there oh, yeah. networking. You know, and you, but you get a lot of people that will say, I just don't have the time. And it's almost like that idea that if you're creating art in a vacuum, how is mm-hmm. anybody going to know about it? Yeah. Like, how are you going to get also, it Also, if you're not promoting yourself, you can't expect somebody else to yep. promote you, right? I mean, right. you know, you're your best, you know, you're, you're going to say the, the best things about yourself, I think, more than anybody else, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it can work the other way, too, right? Like, you have a, if you see a writer, for example, a filmmaker that is on social media too much, do you think that maybe they're not taking their craft seriously? Well, I would say, I mean, <coughs> I think if I see people on social media too much, and I also think that they're being lazy, mm-hmm. yes, yeah. I think that's bad. But I'm not going to call people up, but I'm like, whoa, yeah. this person is, like, slow, but it seems like they have all the time in the world. And again, so like, where are their priorities here? Mm-hmm. Where are their priorities? And because yeah, at a certain point, it's always about the work, right? Right. Like, and you have the, if you make the best movie or the best write the best script ever, you don't necessarily need as much social media, right? You you know you can get. I mean, Hollywood's a long name, but also can happen very fast, right? right. One person can change your life, right? So it's about right. you have to kind of you, yeah, it has to be a balance, right? You can't be all social networking completely forget about. Oh, but, I think that to be good. But for right? me, it's also, because I have films, so it's slightly different. I'll have social media for each film that I have. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I'll have the actors tweeting and mm-hmm. Facebooking. I'll have them linking to everything. I, and for my next f- film, for example, um, I've got them te- teaming up with um, different companies like Fender, 
Alternative Press Magazine, um, a bunch of other companies that they're going to get exclusive clips to show from my film that will link back to my uh, my page, my film's page. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Additionally, I'm going to have all the actors that are in the film. They've all agreed as part of their contract they're going to be tweeting in character. It's great. Facebooking in I character, so we're going to set up yeah. so Facebook fun. pages yeah. and everything for each of the characters. And even now, it's this particular one is based on the true story of this channel called Blank TV, which is the internet's biggest punk and indie channel. We get about a million hits a day. So it will be all over that page. Um, I feel like it's so important. We have people now answering anything that goes to Blank TV as the characters. Before the film ever started, you need to set up your social media before oh, yeah. the film yeah. starts. Start to get your following. Mm -hmm. Because that's going to help if you need to. Mm -hmm. Like, even if you're doing a Kickstarter or, or any GoGo -Go campaign, mm -hmm. or any kind of social, you know, Mm -hmm. campaign, um, crowdfunding, you should start early. Start writing about it all over social media. Start Facebooking, tweeting, Instagramming. Mm -hmm. get, um, get everybody else to write about. Find like-minded areas that, like for example, um, mine is a music-based comedy. Mm -hmm. So that's why I went to Fender and I went to Alternative Press Magazine and I went to Vans Warped Tour and partnered up with all those people so they are aware of it and they're going to help me get the word out to their people mm -hmm. and their fans. And it's, you know, before the movie even mm -hmm. ever starts pre-production, yeah. you know? I, I've seen filmmakers like start, you know, an Instagram just for their film or and then you should have, you know, the Instagram, you know, and when she's in development, she's like yeah. taking pictures of her breaking down yep. the script or, and, and it's, you know, they're, they're thoughtful photos and like every day she kind of, you know, but like you said, like there needs to be product. It can't just be like every day I'm prepping for this movie, but right. you never actually no, make that movie. Another good thing is but, yeah. you make it interactive, like, hey, help us design the poster. Exactly, mm -hmm. yeah. Whoever, whichever or ones we you, use. And as you bring on crew members, you can take on photos yeah. And, yeah, or you can put their photo up. And yeah, I think it's great because then like by the time the film's actually made, there, you have several thousand people are, you know, excited yeah. about the film. And they yeah. feel like they have ownership in exactly. it. Exactly. And this is all crowdsourcing. This is exactly what that is. I'm writing yeah. a book on film crowdsourcing for yeah. local press, and every case study we have in the book involves exactly what you're talking about. They started with every case study, every yeah. film. They started six months before. Mm -hmm. They even shot a frame. They got. They went out to the audience. They identified. You know, this crowdsourcing is just really all about identifying, engaging, mm -hmm. um, and moving that audience, right? So they went out and they figured out who is the audience, how do we engage them, okay, so they identified and engaged them, and then they moved them by asking them questions, by asking them to design the poster, by giving them ownership, even asking, you know, some of them even went as far as to say, hey, you can name the main character. Like, you know, like, this right. is what she's about, and this is yeah. a bunch of, oh, yeah. bunch of names, and all, everybody wants to be involved with that. Mm -hmm. um, even some of these film, some of the filmmakers, one of was a documentary filmmaker, was a, a, a documentary about hiking, and they literally got, they, it got so um, catch caught so much fire on social media that these gear companies got into this and decided to give them all the gear they needed to go on this. They hiked the John Muir Trail, and yeah, they gave them all the stuff. And then they were posting on their social media about it. But and by the time this thing ended up at the LA Film Festival, they it sold out before they they had to open another theater to show it again because so right. many people were so anxious and mm -hmm. felt like they had a piece of it. It makes such a difference, but people don't, you know, yeah. you lose the fact, but the thing that they did, they lost in this whole entire thing, or, or part of this whole entire thing, is that they weren't just broadcasting out, like you were saying, it wasn't just these photos and everything, mm -hmm. it was asking questions, right. they were saying, right. what do you think about this, how would you improve upon this, and giving that ownership makes people want to carry the message. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we're even going so far as to, because it's a music-based project, have bands from all over the world send stickers or flyers of their bands, and maybe they'll get to glimpse it in the film, and then they're going to be tweeting and Facebooking about it because they're excited that they're going to have their band poster or sticker or whatever in a film, you know? Yeah. And it, it broadens yeah. my audience because it's international then. I've got people from all countries right. that are into that kind of music that are going to want to see their sticker, their band in the film, you know? Right. The crowdsourcing aspect, I mean, even on the crowdfunding side, the reason why so many crowdfunding campaigns fail is because people don't realize that there's a crowdsourcing element. So they don't spend the two months before they launch. Yeah. They just launch it. It's like if you build it, they will come kind of thing. Like, come look at my genius, and everybody's going to give me money. Yeah. But most, yeah, exactly. Most people go out, and they spend those two months crowdsourcing, and then saying, hey, listen, when we're about to launch this, would you, you know, yeah. would you support it? Would you spread the word? I think and those are the most successful ones. Yeah, and the key, I think, to, to like a good, like a successful campaign 
like external Indiegogo is creating a team of associate producers because you can't just do it like yeah. you and you know by yourself, whatever. I think you need like that team of like eight or ten people that you hand selected and called and said, Will you do this with mm -hmm. me? This is my project, this is why I want you on my team. And I ask them to each, you know, those ten people to each reach out to twenty people. So it's gotta it's gotta, you know, create this ripple, you know, and go outside the network. But yeah. it's one thing that a lot of people don't do is create that initial team, you know. But, I said, like, honestly, if you're an actor, you have to get over. Like, we were just talking, we were, like, yeah. literally going through lists, like, well, and how many Twitter followers we have. How many Twitter yeah. followers, like, literally, like, because that's, <laughs> a, like, it literally is important. Yeah. Like, literally, how many Twitter followers we have. So, if, even if you're an actor and you're struggling with, like, get on social media and, net, and if you're funny or whatever, mm -hmm. build that fan base, mm -hmm. start building it, because if you have 750,000 Twitter followers, but you've never acted in anything, someone might give you a movie to act in it. Just be for that reason that they know you have that face. Like problem. you can, you can really will yourself into being a celebrity. Right. Create a celebrity. YouTubers now that are yeah. acting, yeah. you know, like there's uh, panels yeah, on, just on that. Just on I'm, acting I'm YouTubers. I'm hiring a couple yeah. of YouTubers for my next film for right. small parts because I realize the value that they bring to the project. Yeah, they have so many fans. And that's just gonna yeah. increase my, you know, yeah. the base of fans that want to come see my film. Hundred thousand people that will see me see your movie. Exactly, it and it's, it's trackable. Yeah. It's controversial too. I mean, there was, a, there was a casting director who I think she didn't put a name out there, but there was a, an article about like four months ago that said, "I'm sorry," like the like the thing was, "I'm sorry, but your your Instagram followers is, are, is as important as your talent." Well, that's funny you say that. Yeah. Do you know for my for my next film? You saw that? Yeah. yeah, for my next film, <clears throat> we were negotiating with the actors, uh, agents, and everything. And obviously, you know, there's three leads. It's an ensemble, but probably the fourth lead. They were trying to get her higher billing because they said she has like 13 million Twitter followers mm -hmm. and she should be billed higher than this other person. I'm like, but the part's smaller, you know. Mm -hmm. But they're using that to negotiate now. Yeah, it's incredible. It's crazy. But you got to make sure if you're doing that, you also have to make sure that the your material is accessible. Like you got again, we see this on stage thirty-two yeah. a lot, where people will say, "I tell this story often on on panels." But we were produced, we were putting together a film, and we put the casting thing up on stage thirty-two, and you're you're able to go in there and apply. And if you apply, you know, you go to the, the guy that's running the, the page, the producer can go to that to the actor's page and mm -hmm. see the real whatever. Guy who we wrote a note to him and said, uh, I'm an actor. And we were like, that's fucking fantastic. And then we went to his page and there were no reels, no oh, anything. Yeah. And I mean, it's like, you gotta be kidding me. Yeah. Yeah. But he was like, but on his bio, he's like, I'm accomplished, I've had 20 credits. But there's no reels, there's nothing. Right. So we didn't even bother. Like, nobody, you know, because there were too many other people that yeah. had applied that had their stuff in order. So why, why even bother? So you don't know how many opportunities you lose mm -hmm. by not having that material out there. Mm -hmm. so. So I think we have about 20 minutes left. So the Periscope people, um, we're on Periscope, right? We are on Periscope. Hello, Periscope. Uh, <laughs> I can ask some questions if they like. If you guys want to start asking any questions, you can start doing that. No. I'll ask a question. Yeah. Okay. So obviously there's a lot of different social media sites. Can you talk about which ones are more or less important? Because obviously, as you were saying, you can't do everything that so much, to a limited amount of time. So how do you sort of rank the various sites and the importance from your perspectives? <laughs> I think a Facebook page is if you have for your film, mm -hmm. yeah. for the yeah. film, you should have a Facebook page for sure. We still we do website <laughs> we do websites also still. Um, we do website we do Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Mm -hmm. And if there's something else that I hear of that's coming up that's getting as much mm -hmm. attention, I'll add that in. <clears throat> Some films I've like repped, I've noticed that their Facebook tends to get like more followers than mm -hmm. their Instagram. Like Instagram is like second fifty people, you know, <laughs> it's just like your. It's like, you know, it's like the filmmaker's family that's like following the Instagram. It's not going to be like that random person in Kentucky. Well, but, that but I, I guess that, but I think it depends what it is. Unless I you start like, early. You know, yeah. Facebook is better because it's not just pictures, it's information Articles, and invites and yeah. art. It's like, mm -hmm. so it's And it's interactive. Easier. You can ask questions like yeah. you were saying. Mm -hmm. right. I mean, even stupid questions like links to favorite the comedy, go. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know? So, Lee, from your yeah. perspective, in terms of your clients, well, individuals, not I would films. Well, again, I think if, like, let's say, let's say if you're a comedy writer, I think. Twitter is important. I think Twitter is really important. I think Facebook's probably less important than for, I think for writers, Facebook would, would be if you're a director or a filmmaker. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's not true. Like there's, I mean, there's some Facebook directors on Facebook, and they'll they'll friend, they'll accept every single Facebook friend, and they'll get they'll max out their well, Facebook, and they'll become I've a maxed out. and then they'll become a fan, and then become like a fan page on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So it's like about, I guess about it's a building a brand, right? Yeah. So I think it's like especially, but if you're a visual person, if you're a director. You should be on Instagram because like, why aren't you just taking mm -hmm. like Mark Romani has like beautiful Instagram pictures mm -hmm. and 
quick tweet in Seven Letters Beautiful. He's a director. Was that Dress- Mar- Marcello? He, yeah, he's great. What, what? Marshall Manic. Oh, Marshall yeah, Manic. Yeah, I, he I does, didn't like, hear you know, the Taylor Swift. Like he's like, but his yeah. set is beautiful. Oh, so yeah. I have all because it's like, oh, but of course, like if you if he's trying to push himself out there mm-hmm. and do beautiful stuff, it's like, oh, look at this like lake. But like, <laughs> if they get beautiful, like, oh no, I didn't actually know what I'm doing. Right. It's not just right. again, you can't just get Instagram. Oh, here's a cup. It's like no, it has to look. It has to still through your perspective. Yeah, it's like it has to be like oh, and you understand that okay, I'm a filmmaker, and oh my god, his Instagram pictures are genius. Mm-hmm. Right. It's like. Mm-hmm. You know, that, I mean, that's important. If I want to sign a director and if they are an Instagram picture, they're ugly. I'm like, well, how can this person direct a movie if they don't right. know how to? They can't get a good picture from their own phone. How can, doesn't matter how fancy the camera you mm-hmm. give them. They right. have to understand it. Right, right. They got to, yeah, sure. And honestly, but I would say if you're an actor too, it's like Vine. If you're not like Vine, I think it's super like, honestly. If like, you're I, funny. Well, no, no, not even. I think it's about like, I was talking to an actor and he's very attractive, right? A very attractive actor, like ripped, built. I'm like, why aren't you doing stupid little eight minute vines where you're just like, oh, just got out of the shower, guys. Right. There's everyone doing. That, cause that shit, you know, people love that. Mm-hmm. People, they, like, it doesn't get, you know, like, you know, like that, that's, that's important. Like, if you want to be an actor and you're, what you're selling is, I'm a hot dude, fucking get on Vine and sell that you're a hot dude. Like, what, I mean, don't, like, just get, like, lean into it, right? It's like, if people will like that, right? It's like, you know, like, you look at, like, you know, all these, you know, these hot young actors, they do the same thing. They're like, look at me on the beach. And they're like, you know, it's like, that's, and, you know, people want, they want to be attracted. You want to look at pretty people, right. right? If you're a pretty person, you're selling your as a pretty person. Well, then do that, right? So yeah, it's Instagram. Vine. Then, then Twitter would be less important, right? right for for someone mm-hmm. like that, mm-hmm. right? Because they're selling something different. They're selling images. Well, right? and everything is a little bit of compliment uh, to one another too. Like, like the complimentary social media sites, yeah. because the, you know Twitter is great for interacting and making that first point of contact. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then it's great to be on Instagram to be yeah. able to show yeah. the work, yeah. you know, in that particular instance. Yeah. So it's like I'm not on Snapchat because I don't get it because I'm too old for Snapchat. But it's like, <laughs> but like, but I guess people yeah. love Snapchat. I mean, people love it, especially again like if your audience is 12 year olds, right. or 13 year olds, or yeah. teenagers. You have yeah. What is that? What are they on? And that's. Mm-hmm. It depends right. what you're selling to. If you're yeah. selling to me, well, I'm not on Snapchat. If you're, you know, like if it's more adult, probably more Facebook, more, you know, so you have to kind of understand what your brand is and what you're kind of trying to do, right? right. You know, like so, and then and then seek those people. Okay, what are those people going to? Okay, then you do that mm-hmm. thing. You find the, what those people are doing and mm-hmm. put yourself out there on right. that. Right. And of course, stage thirty-two. Uh, and Periscope. Uh, I think we have some questions on Periscope. We right? do. We have some questions. Uh, we have some good questions. Uh, the first question. Is from Monica Free seventy five. Do you have any suggestions on how to start raising interest and hopefully money in just a script? Raising money and interest. Raising interest in if you just have a script and oh, you I want to start raising to get, interest. So, like in other words, maybe you'd like to try to get engagement. Well, no, but I mean, engagement. I mean, I think, yeah, I, think, I mean, I think it goes back to like what we were talking about pre It's like I, if if you're a writer and you have an awesome script, if it's about people love mystery and to be intrigued. And give me enough to know what it is, but also, but not too much, because you want me to actually read the script, mm-hmm. right? Because it doesn't matter. Like, I don't want to just, don't, so don't send me an email, which is, this is the three acts of the movie. It's like, oh, what do I do? Well, then I don't need to read the script anymore. Right. Whereas, like, no, you want me to read the script. If you actually believe in the script, you want me to read it. But so, you know, yeah. If I understood correctly, they're asking about getting financing? Well, I think, I think the idea was maybe, like, the engage, <coughs> to get, get yeah. to that first point of contact to say that, you know, to read it, to ultimately want to get behind it, I yeah. think. You know, so it's more, I think the question is more. Well, so, I mean, like, if, let's say, if you, you make, you know, it's about, let's say, create some kind of viral marketing campaign. Like, mm-hmm. again, like, you know, like something like, you know, like a bad robot is, like, the king of that. Like, they'll, like, you know, release cool little things and teasers, like, what, they, what is this thing, right? It's like, mm-hmm. so, like, if you're trying to get hype for a movie or a script or you're trying to find financing, create a brand mm-hmm. and understand what it is. Like you look at something like, again, you know, like look at something like The Witch or whatever, right? And they have the Black Phillip stuff and he's on Twitter and he's tweeting at people. And it's like, so they have, you know, they're they're creating this mystery and these characters and these kind of things, right? So it's about, if you're just trying to, you know, use the viral marketing kind of thing, go do some little funny videos or this or that, you know, that are related to your script, even if it's tangentially or whatever, mm-hmm. right? So, and that's I, how you can I, get I, interest. And then they feel, oh, I want to put some, what is this, the movie? I'll put some money in that or whatever, right? right. It's like, right. it's all about. Yeah. I would, I would suggest a look book. I mean, it's oh, yeah. you can make it yeah. on social, but you could put it on on your website. Your website could be a, a look book. You yeah. Know? I, I mean, a lot and for of those who may not know what a look book. Yeah, is, a maybe. look book. I mean, it, it could be anything like ten pages, and just it's more like visual. It's like your mm-hmm. script in a visual format, you know, yeah. and it has like a log line, a synopsis, sometimes a director statement. Mm-hmm. And then just like pictures of who these characters are that you've written and, and what this world looks like. 
And so I get so hooked just look at these like beautiful lookbooks and then mm -hmm. I read the script, yeah. you know, and I, a lot of times when I'm sending, like selling stuff, I'll send the lookbook and the script. It's become yeah. like kind of a standard now, I mm -hmm. think, like overnight, like I've seen them. Yeah, I always do that. And then I'll also include like playlists of what the characters might listen to or, right. you know, you, want to, you can get as detailed as you want and it can be, it's, it's a fun thing to make. And then it's good for your crew yeah. when you, you start bringing crew on mm -hmm. they all are and, on the same page. And talent, have, right, too. And talent. I've had actors tell me like, thank you so much because now I really get your vision. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's helpful. And it probably separate, it obviously separates out from all the sheer amount of people that, again, are approaching you with yeah. all this material. Yeah. This is one extra advantage that's going to yeah. get your interest. I mean, what I would say, it doesn't. It almost kind of doesn't matter what it is as long as it's awesome. Right. It, whatever the most, and again, that's why it's always going to be specific to whatever, whatever thing you're in. Be awesome. awesome. But like, no, but like, if you have awesome. seven, seven, seven or whatever, you're going to be great. Awesome. Like, that's like, oh, here's be a awesome. teaser for my movie, mm -hmm. and the yeah. teaser is not yeah. good. <laughs> the teaser is not good. Yeah. Don't send that to anybody. Right? If it's not great, that's actually going to hurt you more than it's going to help you. Right. Because I might be more intrigued to read a script, but then I look at your, your lookbook, and I'm like, wow, this lookbook was like, this is a PowerPoint presentation. This person clearly is not an artist. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to read the script. Right. I, I, so you have to be, you actually have to be careful with that, too. Right. You have to know, you have to be confident that it's actually good. Smart. And that someone's actually going to look at this and be like, and think that it's great. Send it to all your friends before you post it to Twitter or whatever. Right. Like, is this actually good? Would you look at this thing? Right. You know, you know market test this without before you're sending it out right because right? if it doesn't if it doesn't pass that taste test you're it doesn't matter you're never you're not you're not helping yourself right? go to go to friends that are going to be honest with you yeah. too not, not your mother yeah i uh, you got another question right yeah first a comment monica free 75 said thank you a lot of other uh, the other viewers said thank you as well that was very helpful that 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 segment yeah, cool. right there <laughs> um that segment we we have we have uh, kelsey goodwin who's asked i use my facebook for friends and family only should i create another account Separate account. Question. You get that a lot. I would. I mean, if if you have a private, like if you've got kids and you don't want everyone to see what your kids look like or what they're yeah. doing, I would create a second one. But still, you have to maintain it and be on it constantly. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. work. But I feel like you need to have that presence out there. Mm -hmm. I think if you're doing a lot of engagement on, on Facebook with friends and family, I think you do dilute. The, you know what you're looking to do. Yeah. I find that when I look at yeah. other people's, you know, actors or whatever, like I said, we're casting something, and and I don't see um, <laughs> again the material, the dedication to the craft, the yeah. seriousness of the craft. I see more yeah. of the jokey family stuff. It doesn't. Mm -hmm. It's not compelling in that way, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. So I, I actually think that having two would be probably the better thing mm -hmm. to do, especially if that's what you really. I would want. never be able to have, handle having two. Oh, I, mean, no, I, I could handle my personal one yeah. and then my film. But you, you, know, know, but, yeah. you also have to ask yourself how you handle that account. Like, do you yeah. want it to be all friends and family, or do you yeah. want to keep it more limited? Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. um, I think that's a big part of it as well. The thing is, like, I have like, I have like Facebook followers, not just friends too, so they can't see everything. So, mm -hmm. tell me what it is. Sometimes, and on Facebook. You can do you can do segments. You can actually break right. it down. Mm -hmm. You can actually like you can actually just have a section that's and you can really go in there and let's say there's 15 people that you want to just share family stuff with. Mm -hmm. You can really create a group. Mm -hmm. There's yeah, just yeah, 15 yeah. people. Yeah. And if you post stuff and you just share it with that group, it doesn't get exposed to the mm -hmm. bigger mm -hmm. thing too. Mm -hmm. So you can well, that takes a little bit extra time, but I think that'd be better than two because I think two is going to be con I would be worried to be confusing. Yeah. So someone's searching for you, they're going to Facebook friend both. Right, or they're not going to know what the deal is. Mm -hmm. I think it's better to. I mean, if you, I mean, if you want to use Facebook for friends and family, but it's like if you're trying to get into Hollywood, I think you really have to be like, you gotta. If you're serious about it, like That's you gotta right. be. What do you want to do? You want to make a movie, or you just want to post cat pictures to your friends? It's yeah. like you gotta like picture it. Like so, it's like if you want to post cat pictures, like well then, I, I guess don't pictures. use. Well, like, well, they're great. If they're Part great, of your if they're great, right? It's like they're awesome cat pictures. They're, they're great, great cat pictures. pictures. But it depends what your focus is. And you is, post video right? pictures all the time. Well, that's part of my brain. <laughs> but <yeah. laughs> but it's like, but you know, it's about understanding, you know, owning what you want to do, right? Right? Like, what do you want to do when you have to like? So again, like that's all. When I look at people's social media. Mm -hmm. It's also important to me to look at that too. Right. It shows you how serious they are, right? If they're, I want to work in Hollywood. I want to work in Hollywood. I want to work in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. That's the kind of person I want to work with. Right. Versus, I, you know, if someone's more casual about it. I don't need, I don't need, I don't need part-time writers or right. casual writers. I need people who are ready to go. Right. right? And this is their thing, right? Mm -hmm. I don't look at it the same way at all. Oh. <laughs> I don't look at writers. Controversial. Uh, I just, I don't. I mean, well, yeah, because yeah, like, yeah, 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 I'm not repping yeah. the writer. Yeah. I'm just having the project, which is, mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to make into a film. Yeah. So 
So for me, that's not as important. Yeah. Well, I think it also depends what you're using. If you're, if you're, yeah. If you lose it, if you just have a personal Facebook page, then just be a personal Facebook page. Like, that the nice thing about the personal Facebook pages is you get to a glimpse into people's personalities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whereas yeah. the, the like well, the film ones are just about the yeah. film. Well, I think that's like what I do. It's like Facebook to me is more kind of more pun pictures. I don't put Twitter has fewer <laughs> pun pictures right. than Facebook does. Right. Mm -hmm. Instagram. All very, pun pictures. Very all pictures. Just, all yeah. pun pictures. All pun right. pictures. Right. All pun pictures. That's on Twitter. <laughs> that's, that's on Twitter. Right. So it's like, but again, you know, like, so, but again, like, so like, Twitter, it's like more like, okay, just industry stuff, right. right? Facebook, mostly industry stuff, but those are mostly my friends, but I'm not accepting every single person that's yeah. Facebook friending me. So it's a, it's a little curated. Right. Right. So it's about kind of understanding that dynamic too, right? When I, I got off the, you know, I'll take it from the creative side. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was looking to start networking and, and, one of the reasons why I started Stage 32 was because Facebook, I found it to be a time suck. Mm -hmm. I found that no matter how much I tried to make it about my writing, it got diluted by everybody else that, you know, mm -hmm. was kind of in the circle. Yeah. So I got rid of that. Yeah. The only two things that I'm on, up until a month ago, the only two things I was on for, for me on the creative end was Stage 32 and Twitter because yeah. I felt, found that Twitter is very easy. It's very easy to yep. engage people, interact with yep. people. Find people, mm -hmm. yep. people more receptive on yep. there. Mm -hmm. It's easy, quick, yeah, last. Yeah. It's not sucking my time away. Yeah, yeah. Now, a month ago, our social medias are right. I was watching this at stage three. She put mm -hmm. me on Instagram, but she did it for the purposes of that. That again, that glimpse into my life mm -hmm. that right. wasn't really getting out there, mm -hmm. maybe on stage three or on Twitter. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of interesting. I get it. You know, a little more color. It takes a little bit more time, mm -hmm. but the reaction it has been well worth it. Well, the great you thing know? is you can link them. So yeah. you can post on, you know, mm -hmm. you can take a picture on Instagram and post it on your Facebook and Twitter at the same yeah. time. Yeah. So that takes away a little chunk of time. But sometimes that's, that's, sometimes that's dangerous too because sometimes that comes across as lazy as well. Uh -huh. Like if you're just kind of putting information out there, <laughs> it doesn't seem, because every platform has its own vibe in my yeah. opinion. So, you know, sometimes it can come across as lazy. Go when I tweeted back. about this event, I did. That's all right. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I work, <laughs> that worked perfectly fine. We'll all be putting pictures on our Instagram. Yeah. That's right. We'll be posting. We'll be tweeting out. Harry, what else we got? Uh, a little bit of uh, it, it, there's a, a bunch of people asking is Facebook on its way out, but you just started to talk about no, your me, feelings. Everybody is different. For me, Facebook was absolutely useless for me as a, on the creative side. I found it to be an enormous time suck. I felt like I would get pulled into that rabbit hole, and all of a sudden, like a half hour would go by, and I'm like, I just wasted a half hour of my professional mm -hmm. day <laughs> on this shit. You know what I mean? So. For me, it just never worked, but I mean, other people have different opinions. Well, and, you know. I got really, like, if I was, like, researching all the Sundance movies, like, the films that didn't have Facebook pages when they first, like, when the first press release went out, I was so upset. I was like, why don't they have Facebook pages? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, and then by the time the festival, like, a week before the festival, all of them had Facebook But that's different, though. I think you have to right, right. more I, I, product, I, more I think you them. have to be there. Yeah, you know of course, mean? yeah. So it's, I don't think it's out for the, the films. Right. Because it is, it is operating as a website. Because for the individual person, I don't care if the film is. Yeah. I honestly don't. Okay. Yeah. Can I ask no. you a question? We were kind of going there, so I don't want to derail, but I kind of just, I'm curious. Um, social media is so permanent. Um, <laughs> what do, do you have any suggestions or things that really turn you off? You started to kind of go there about all that stuff and what your, your actors or your writers or your talent might be posting, what they shouldn't be posting, what you might see that scares you. Is there anything like that? Because it's such a... For me, I am sometimes I'm in, like intimidated by how permanent it is. I'm like, oh crap! I do want to be seen as X. If I do this, am I changing that, and then it's there forever? Or if, do you have any thoughts about that kind of stuff? Good question. I don't get offended by anything. If it's who you are, like, that's me. If it's who you are, you're like, yeah. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, it was funny because someone favorited some tweet that was like three year, years ago of mine. I was like, oh man, maybe I shouldn't have tweeted that three years ago. <laughs> Man, whatever. Who cares? Right. right? It's like it's not like oh, he's having fun at a party. <laughs> it's like okay, oh, ooh, you're not gonna buy my script now because I have fun at a party. It's like who cares? Right. right? It's like so. It's like, kind of like so. I think it. You know, it, there's clearly it's like, but everyone. I'm, I mean, I do this all the time. I'll like I'll make, I'll tweet something. I'm like, uh, like especially about movies. I've gotten really careful about not saying anything bad about movies. Mm -hmm. Not being neg. Like trying to be very. But again, I think that's also just a good life lesson for everyone. Is let's just be positive. Like instead of like. This was awful. Blah, 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 blah. Be like, oh my god, I saw this movie. It was amazing. Because then, like, the, you know, being being a good person on social media versus a bad person. So that's why I say if somebody sees someone's Twitter feed and it's just them being like me, 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 and I'm like, well, this is a mean person. Yeah. This person has like darkness inside them. Right. I feel like though, in this industry, you know, we're creative. You can be crazy, 
But if you want a corporate job, if you decide one day oh, yeah. you want to work at the studio, you might not want to put the drunk pictures up there. <laughs> you know, it's just you got to figure out what I think where you want to be and try and foresee long term where you want to be and um, be cautious. Yeah, but Hollywood's a different. Piece. But yeah, like, Hollywood's a different I put piece, everything out there. It's a much different piece than yeah. If you're trying to go work in a law firm, like, yeah. like, you have to like they're gonna care a lot more. Like right. exactly. social media is for film again because I think it's about. Because I don't think I'm not. I like to know that someone is a whole person too, mm -hmm. right? It's like you know, Hollywood is about personalities and getting along with people. Yeah, I think the positive thing. I would. I'd be most. I would be <clears> the <throat> thing. I'd be most scared about if you tweeted mean stuff. Right. That like because again, it's just not going to help you because if someone was actually involved in the movie and they see that, like, oh, we're leaking on Twitter or whatever, it's like that doesn't help yeah. anybody. That doesn't help yeah. anybody, right? But all people have been mean to me on Twitter, and I like really. I block them. Mm -hmm. I block them. Like, I'm like, no. Like, no, absolutely not. Yeah. Right. So, there you go. You guys didn't mention LinkedIn at all. Any thoughts? I was about to say, no, notice how that didn't come up. No. Right. LinkedIn, no. another it's not, it's not a Hollywood, I mean, I have it, obviously, but it's not yeah. a Hollywood thing. It's like, yeah. it's it's all, like, all my friends in other industries use it, like, like you know, religiously. Right. Mm -hmm. I I get so many, like, requests, and it's like, so annoying. It's I an annoying go on, Yeah, I maybe <laughs> check it every, like, two or three months, and I but don't ever respond to it. Yeah, it was one of, the, one of the other reasons why I started stage thirty-two because I was on there as a screenwriter and a producer, and I, I used to joke it's where conversations go to die, <laughs> because you start a conversation and nobody responds, right. you know, or and then you get network requests and you, you click them and nobody communicates. Yeah. So it's like yeah. what the hell am I supposed to do? Stage thirty-two is a, is more like LinkedIn for filmmakers, film yeah, right. yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's, yeah. it's much more open. Like LinkedIn is like I was trying to like get a hold of some writer, and I'm like I'm trying to message them on LinkedIn, but you can't. You have to be friends with somebody to message them. I'm like. Yeah. What? I'm like, I'm trying to get a hold of this person. Like, this person will want to hear from me, and I have to, like, you know what the problem is? I can't the, talk to them. What? To me, the problem is, like, if I'm, like, about to go meet, a, like, an executive, and I don't know if they look like, like, you know, usually the LinkedIn is the thing that comes mm -hmm. up. Right. But I don't, I'm so afraid to click on it. Because then they know you're looking at it. They know you're looking at it. And I'm like, this is so embarrassing. Because then they know you're, like, doing research on that. You're stalking you know? them. So that's probably a huge failing. Links, you know, yeah. LinkedIn. Yeah. And then there's the opposite of that too, where people can actually block the fact that they're looking. So you get these uh, anonymous heads oh. that you know somebody from Ohio looked at you and like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> All right, so I think we have time for one more question because then Jake is going to do his awesomeness and uh, just uh, agree, say, disagree. Should you post the same thing on every platform when you go out with something? I think it depends on what it is. Like I, I said um, when I was saying that I was going to do this panel, I just did it on every platform. Because different people look at different yeah. things. Yeah. I think it's like if it's an if it's an event or something, then yeah, you yeah. need to blast it everywhere. If it's something again, yeah, it's more curated mm -hmm. or whatever. Yeah, you're not gonna. It's not. I think it depends right. what it is. But I think in general, I don't think I don't think you should be precious with stuff either, right? Because right? if you're pre like, social media, the point of it is to get people to look at it, mm -hmm. right? So it's like, well, mm -hmm. could I like if I mean, do it, right? Like I would say overshare, right? Mm -hmm. Overshare, yeah. And I think that that, you know, I think the lesson to take away, if you want to like wrap it up, maybe with one comment is that, you know, well, I mean, just, I think the fact just that you need to be on there, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's like, you know, yeah. you, need to, you need to get out there and you need to, uh, again, if you're creating all this work and you're, you're honing your craft and mm -hmm. if you're not putting it out there. Yeah. We've been posting all Sundays. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, connect with your audience and know what your yeah, know, know what I mean, your like, brand. I mean, like as reps, I mean, like that's what we do. Like we are like you know on the ground, right. like making yeah. sure that the right people get so it's yeah. oh this is how that you it's there so use it right. right. It's like you don't before you get people like us to help you. It's like you can you can have the power to do this now. <coughs> you have to wait. Right. Do you want to let people know what they can find you on social media? Or do you want to stay anonymous and let them know? <laughs> <laughs> Look for it. No, no, no. <laughs> search Google. No. Um, I'm Lee Stobie on everything. And it's me campy. It's me campy. <laughs> it's me campy. <laughs> I'm just Susan Diner. Oh. And I'm RB walks into a bar. <laughs> so, uh, that's it. I want to thank the uh, panelists and thank everybody that came. Thank, thank everybody you on Periscope and stay tuned. <laughs>